there and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. Today we will be diving into Nikki Tutorial's new beauty brand, skincare brand. It's pretty much just skincare related right now, but I have a feeling she's going to do color cosmetics in the future, so let's just call it a beauty brand. This brand is called Nimia and she launched five products. We will only be talking about four out of those five products because the last one is a fan. So I don't feel like there's much to speak on on that from my perspective as a chemist. We'll break down the ingredients in the Nimia line, particularly the ones that they highlight as notable ingredients. And I will give you my thoughts on the product and the line as a whole. So I probably like many others was really surprised that she didn't come out with color cosmetics like eyeshadows, lipsticks, anything like that. But as I started to look more into this line, I did realize that Nikki Tutorial's Nimia line is makeup adjacent. So it may not be makeup, but they are all things that are supposed to benefit your makeup application. One thing I really liked about her line is that upon looking at the products, these are all products that you should see a immediate benefit from in terms of your skin quality as opposed to a product that is going to rely on people using it for six weeks before they see any results. The first product we're going to talk about is the Wear It All Starts Cream. This is a primer moisturizer hybrid. The goal of this product is to make your skin look glowing, but it is also going to help prime your skin as a canvas for makeup. Glycerin is the first highlighted ingredient for this product and they put that it's a fantastic moisturizer. I do really appreciate that brands are putting an emphasis on glycerin lately. It's a very inexpensive humectant that does a really good job. If you didn't know, a humectant is really good at attracting water to itself and in turn when it attracts water to itself, it then hydrates your skin. It's a classic ingredient. It's pretty much in every moisturizer and it usually does more of the legwork than hyaluronic acid does in terms of hydrating your skin. Almost always, if there's hyaluronic acid, there's probably glycerin in there too. And it's a really inexpensive ingredient, which is why it's used so often. Glycerin in particular is a more dense humectant, so it's heavier for the same amount of volume. And it does have a tacky feeling when applied to the skin. And if you look in the description of the cream, it does say that it has a comfortable, sticky feeling. If you have a familiarity with Nikki Tutorials, you know that she popularized the Nivea sensitive skin aftershave balm. I swear that was sold out of the store. I bought this product because she really loved to use it because it left a tacky feeling on her skin. This quality of it acted as a primer for her makeup to adhere better. The Nivea aftershave balm also does have glycerin, which I believe is what is leading to the sticky feeling. The next ingredient is honey in parentheses Mel. They say it's a moisturizing ingredient and it has antimicrobial properties. Also because it is honey, it probably also contributes to that tacky feeling. Honey is antimicrobial, but I do have concerns if it is enough to preserve this formula. I'm sure that they did microbial testing. I hope that they did, which would confirm if it does or does not keep this formula preserved. I did notice the only other preservative that I saw right off the bat in here was ethyl hexoglycerin, which acts as a support system for a preservative system. And because there are ingredients like water, glycerin, which is really good at attracting water, if your product contains water, you have to have something to preserve it. You can get away with it in things like eyeshadows, lipsticks, and balms, but even then a lot of the times they do throw preservatives in there just to make sure it doesn't grow anything. Next is lactic acid. So this is an AHA ingredient that they say lifts dead skin cells. So lactic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid. Alpha hydroxy acids work. They break down the glue that holds your skin cells together, which then helps you remove these skin cells. It is what is commonly referred to as a chemical exfoliant. It is considered one of the more gentle ones. Glycolic acid is another one, but lactic acid is considered a better starting chemical exfoliant if you're looking to get into those kind of exfoliants. I am a bit skeptical of the efficacy of this ingredient due to the manner in which it's being applied to your skin. This is a cream product and usually exfoliant type of products are in a toner form or a serum. Usually a very thin formula to help 
reach the skin a lot easier. And lactic acid in this formula is listed very low on the list. We can see it's listed below ethyl hexoglycerin, which is most likely at 1% or less. EU regulations are different, but for the most part, it is very typical of companies to list ingredients in order of highest concentration to lowest concentration with anything at 1% or less being allowed to be in any order. So even though that is a US requirement, I think most companies tend to follow that if it's not a regulation in other countries. But the maximum concentration I believe this could be at is 1% and I don't feel that that's probably going to yield a noticeable difference in your skin from this product alone. If you do want to get into alpha hydroxy acids, I will leave a couple of affiliate links down below for some products that I like to use. Another ingredient they list is mica. Now they don't list why they use mica, but it does mention characteristics about the sourcing of this ingredient. They say that they use 100% responsibly sourced and processed mica that is traceable through the operation of the raw material supplier. And if you're not familiar with mica and its sourcing, there are a lot of potential issues with how the mica is mined in terms of the labor used to mine it. I won't dive into it here, but I did make a video previously about this. I'll link it up in the cards and down below. I do think it's good that this brand is mentioning this. It would be very difficult to stop using some of these ingredients, but it is good to try to go towards more ethical sourcing. I think it's good to explicitly mention this as a smaller brand because a lot of larger brands have started to take a more ethical route to sourcing and they are affiliated with organizations that do that, but you don't really get that same information from a smaller brand unless it's offered up to you as they have said here. So in this formula, I'm confident that it's used for the purpose of giving you that glowy appearance. The mica particles are going to be reflective and when you put them into the cream and apply it to your skin, it is going to have a glittery effect. I don't know to the extent of how glittery, but it is going to give you a sort of glowing look. And this ingredient is actually in every product from her line. And this makes sense because she's into glowy skin. In the description, they also mention the perfume or the fragrance, which I guess is going to be the same throughout all of her products. And it is mentioned that the combination of the raw materials doesn't always smell nice. So a scent does have to be added in order to mask the smell of the product. That is true. Sometimes these ingredients don't have a pleasant smell to them. They kind of smell like Play-Doh almost. So they added a little bit of fragrance to make this product a little bit nicer to use. And truthfully, most people's skin can probably tolerate fragrance. And I'll leave some talks from the EcoWell in which there were dermatologists that spoke on the topic of fragrance in skincare. But if you are one of those people that cannot tolerate fragrance in your skincare, this probably isn't going to be the line of products for you. So looking at the ingredients list in this product, it does look like it will meet the needs of acting as a good base for makeup. And it does have the moisturizing ingredients in there, so it will also meet that as well. Now we're going to move on to the License to Glow Serum. The intent of the serum is to make you look radiant and lit from within. Two of the highlight ingredients are the fragrance and the mica, but those are in every product, so we are going to be covering those again for the rest of the video. All the things I said about it being in the cream also apply to it in these other products as well. The top listed ingredient is the pineapple fruit extract. It's highlighted as a mild exfoliant, moisturizing, and soothing. So I'm going to let you know right now I have a healthy dose of skepticism when it comes to extracts. It's one of those cases where the ingredient being listed doesn't tell you everything you need to know about the quality of the ingredient and the benefits. And a lot of times the benefits of these extracts are often overhyped. A lot of these just function as antioxidants in these formulas. And of course, any extract from a plant can have some variability due to the genetics of the plant, the quality of the crop that was grown, the conditions of the growing season, etc. But after all that, the pineapple extract is supposed to have exfoliant properties, and that's for a couple of reasons. One, the pineapple is acidic, so the fruit acids can contribute to help lifting those dead skin cells as well. And also because pineapple contains bromelain. These are enzymes that also act as exfoliants. And in terms of concentration on the list, it's after water, glycerin, and polysorbate 20, which is what's keeping everything together in this formula. It's probably at a low concentration. It's harder to tell because it's a serum. There are very few higher level ingredients, so it's hard to know the exact concentration 
of the pineapple extract, but again, I am skeptical. If your primary goal is to see exfoliating your results, again, I recommend that there are better products out there to do so. Grapefruit extract is also an antioxidant, and that's pretty much the only reason they give. Marula oil, they also say it's gonna help hydrate the skin. It's an oil, so it's not gonna function like glycerin would in terms of drawing moisture to the skin, but since the oil is more water resistant, it can help act as an occlusive and keep that water in. That just depends on the type of oil it is, but generally that's what we think when we think of oils. Grapeseed oil is supposed to be smoothing and protective, which is probably describing the occlusive properties, but they also mention vitamin E. One thing to note is vitamin E is an antioxidant, but its benefit is more so for the formula than it is for your skin. In a formula, when you're using natural extracts, natural oils, there is a concern that the oils especially are gonna go rancid. So vitamin E being in a formula can help slow down that reaction from happening because that could also potentially lead to adverse effects on your skin as well. So that is why vitamin E is important in cosmetic formulas. They also mentioned squalene is anti-inflammatory and can reduce redness, which is also similar to what they described about the marula oil. They mentioned that their squalene is derived from plants and that not all squalene is vegan, which is true. I think squalene was also able to be derived from shark fins, but realistically, I'm pretty sure most of the squalene comes from olives now because it's a lot easier to farm olives than it is to farm sharks, if that makes sense. So it's highly probable that if you see squalene, it's probably vegan. Lastly, they mentioned denatured alcohol. If you ever looked up ingredients to watch out for in skincare or makeup, I'm sure that denatured alcohol was on the list. The argument is that denatured alcohol is drying, it can damage your skin barrier. That's typically the argument that's thrown out there. If you were to use it in excessive amounts without replenishing your skin, yes, those are definitely all concerns that you could have. But there are a lot of benefits to denatured alcohol. It helps ingredients penetrate better. And in this case, it is used as a solvent for those natural extracts that are being used. So this is what those, those beneficial ingredients from the fruits or plants are being dissolved into to give you those benefits. I also made a video all about alcohol and cosmetics as well and trying to bust some myths. So again, card, description. So I do think this is a good product, particularly if you want a hydrating serum. Sometimes we need that extra boost. If you're looking for a product that is trying to either exfoliate or help discoloration, I'd recommend using something that has compounds in it that are specific to help those things. Niacinamide, vitamin C, um, glycolic acid, lactic acid, all specific compounds, molecules that are meant to do that and, and are very well researched in terms of the benefits of them. So now we're moving on to the Burr Burr Cooling Eye Stick. This is supposed to be an instant deep puffing cooling eye stick that nurtures and hydrates stressed eyes. So before we get into the highlighted ingredients, I do want to point out the main benefit of this whole line is hydrating and, and that in turn helping your skin to help your makeup application. And hydrating your skin properly really does help your makeup apply better. I have a similar eye stick from Tatcha and I really like to use that one when my eyes feel a little drier, maybe I didn't do the best at moisturizing, just to add a little bit of help. Not a necessity by any means, but you know those days that are kind of rough and you just need a little bit of extra help? That's what this product is for. So this one is very similar. You have ingredients like glycerin, other humectants like dipropylene glycol, butylene glycol, xylitol, and silk amino acids, all of which are gonna help the hydration of your skin. The xylitol and the silk amino acids are a highlighted ingredient for this product. So I think those highlighted ingredients are contributing the most to the benefits of this product. The first two highlighted ingredients were caffeine and green tea extract. Caffeine, we know, wakes you up. And you find both of these ingredients in a lot of eye-related products. I think because of the idea tea, caffeine, wake up, I think that's kind of what they go for. I personally don't feel like these contribute that much to the formula. Again, I'm just skeptical about that. There's also squalene in this formula, which I also mentioned in the serum. The squalene in this formula is also gonna help 
relieve that dry feeling in the eyes and just kind of soften the skin around the eyes. Like I previously mentioned, xylitol and silk amino acids are very similar in nature to glycerin. They're good at attracting water to themselves and those in turn hydrate the skin. The xylitol is what gives the cooling effect in this product that they mentioned. Xylitol is a sugar substitute actually, and when it is dissolved, it is an endothermic reaction, which means it takes heat to perform this reaction, and that's gonna leave you with a cold surrounding, and that is why you have this cooling effect. And we're on to the last product. I left the set it and forget it setting spray for last because that would be the last step, so see, it makes sense. So this product doesn't have a lot mentioned in terms of highlighting ingredients. The only one is PVP. PVP is going to be a film former. So as this product dries on your skin, this compound creates a thin film on your skin. This is going to be water resistant. It's going to be oil resistant. And this is what helps your makeup lasts longer. You find similar ingredients, film former ingredients in things like matte liquid lipstick, long wear foundation, water resistant sunscreen. And since there's really not a lot to talk about in this product, there is an ingredient that I would like to talk about that is in this product and that is sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a very strong base. It's caustic, it's very corrosive and very high concentration. When used in formulas like this, it is used for pH adjusting purposes. This is it, it's gonna, ra it's gonna raise the pH if a product's too acidic and the sodium hydroxide separates out in the formula into sodium ions and water. So it's not harmful when in that capacity. So overall, I think that this is a good line because of the immediate benefits her products will give to not only your skin, but to the makeup application as well. I think that's a great way for her to keep her line true to what we know her as, but also I think this is an easier way for her brand to start out as, and I do hope to see color cosmetics from her in the future because that's what I would really like to see out of her. And if you learned something today, please give this video a like. Let me know what you think of the brand. Do any of these products interest you? And do not forget to subscribe if you want to learn more about the science behind your skincare and makeup. And with that, I will see you in my next video. Bye!